Hello everyone, let's start today with the anatomy of a upper limb that is the bones of the upper limb. Upper limb bones consists of a clavicle, this one is the scapula and then the bones of the upper arm uh, that is this include a uh, humerus. Then the bones of the forearm which include the radius uh, which is towards the side or towards the thumb which is the lateral bone and the ulna which is the medial bone. Then the include the bones uh, of the hand includes uh, carpal bones present in the wrist, metacarpals, uh, you can see better view over here, uh, these are the carpal bones, then comes metacarpals and these are phalanges which are present in the finger, phalanges. So let's start today with the anatomy of the clavicle, clavicle has a uh, two ends. A uh, lateral end or a uh, acromial end or a medial end or sternal end. Medial end or sternal end, it is a uh, large, it is rounded, uh, it is bit quadrangular in shape and it has a facet for articulation with the manubrium. Lower part of the facet extends slightly to the inferior surface and articulates with the first coastal cartilage. It has a rough area over uh, above its middle uh, articular facet. It gives a attachment to the intraclavicular ligament. Then coming to the lateral end, it is a flattened, as you can see, it is flattened and it carries an oval facet for articulation with the acromion process of the scapula and it forms the acromyoclavicular joint. Then over, uh, over here, as you can see, it is a lateral one third. Lateral one third of the shaft is convex or backward. Can see here we go. Lateral one third of the shaft is convex backward, medial two third of the shaft is convex uh, or forward. Then coming to the next point of the clavicle, uh, clavicle it has a then coming to the next point of the clavicle, clavicle it has a conoid tubercle over here. You can see here it is a conoid tubercle, then. Uh, subclavian groove and a trapezoid line for the view you can see over here see uh, here it is it's a stone acromion end and this one is the trapezoid line uh, this is the conoid tubercle see you can see uh, this one is the conoid tubercle here it is a subclavian groove and here it is a tuberosity coastal tuberosity see oh, you can see the impression for coastal tuberosity and this one is the 3D view of the clavicle. Here you can see its articulation uh, from over here. Its acromion is attached with the acromion of a scapula, and here it is uh, attached with the manubrium of a sternum. See over here, you can see the 3D view. Uh, this one is the acromial end, uh, acromial end of the clavicle, which articulates with the acromion of the scapula like this and uh, this one is the sternal end which articulates with the manubrium sternum see over here it is attached like this over here you can see the better view then coming to the attachment of the muscles uh, over here this one is the deltoid this one is the trapezius uh, over here it is a attachment for the coracoclavicular ligament over here it is attached the clavipectorial fascia and then this one is a pectoralis major and here is attached a costoclavicular ligament this is the lower surface of the right clavicle and then this one coming to the upper surface of the right clavicle this is the trapezius this one over here it is attached the deltoid this one is the sternomastoid and again this one is the pectoralis major uh, then coming to the ligaments attached, the ligaments attached are, see over here on conoid tubercle, there is attachment for the costoclavicular ligament. Coming to the ligaments, there are uh, three ligaments. First is the coracoclavicular ligament. It has two parts, trapezoid part and a conoid part. Then the costoclavicular ligament, over here you can see costoclavicular, this is the costoclavicular ligament, it connects the inferior surface of medial 
end of this uh, clavicle with the first rib then is the interclavicular ligament that means it connects the two clavicle connects medial end of two clavicle then coming to the clinical importance of the clavicle it is the most commonly fractured between the medial two third and the medial two third and lateral one third over here it is the most common point of the fracture because uh, the fracture is uh, lateral to the ligament um, and it is uh, the most common site of the fracture is the junction between the medial two third and lateral one third of the shaft the cause of the fracture may be an indirect force like uh, falling from outstretched hand then on coming to the joints three joints that is the sternoclavicular sternoclavicular joint which link bones acromioclavicular joint which connects bones and then glenohumeral joint that connects the humerus of arm with the scapula uh, coming to the sternoclavicular joint uh, it is a type of a saddle joint okay uh, sternal end of the clavicle this is um, a clavicle with the clavicular notch of the manubium and first Coastal cartilage over here it is attached. Uh, it involves the ligaments, anterior post and posterior sternoclavicular ligament, costoclavicular ligament, and uh, interclavicular ligament. And coming to the next joint, which is a acromioclavicular joint, uh, it is a synovial joint. Bones involved in this is the acromion process of the scapula and the acromial end of the acromial end of the clavicle. Uh, ligaments involved in this is acromioclavicular ligament and coracoclavicular ligament. Coracoclavicular ligament below it is present a synovial bursa and coracoclavicular ligament has two parts. So this was all about the clavicle. If you want to refer my notes, you can even uh, go on my Instagram account that is anatomy1803. Thank you.